I want to swing. Um, I'm like, I see your hands, Negro. Um, love I am, Dell. I want to bring this into the fold uh, before I go to. I think it was Negro next. Um, he had his hand up for a minute. Um, the Tyler Perry incident. Uh, so Barack Obama's birthday um, was, I think, on the fourth or whatever, and Tyler Perry posted something which he eventually took down. But he posted a picture of him and Barack Obama in Tyler Perry's library. And he says, um, quote, this photo was taken at my house. I bought these chairs from an auction because they belonged to Abraham Lincoln. We both sat in them and had a conversation. I wonder when he freed the slaves, could he have imagined that one day a descendant of those slaves will become president of the United States? Only in our America and with all of her flaws, what a great country we live in and we must fight to keep our democracy. Happy birthday to President Barack Obama. He did take it down because Barack Obama is not a descendant of slaves or, or enslaved Africans. However, most likely he is a descendant of enslavers. So black people, which I'm proud of, came after Tyler Perry and he took that shit down because you're tweeting false information. By the way, his direct connection is two great, great grandfathers who were Confederate Army officers. One of them rode with the notorious criminal guerrilla, Quantrell, who terrorized, lynched, murdered, and raped many American citizens, white and black, or oh, not citizens at the time, uh, in Kansas and Missouri. Mm -hmm. So that's who, and, oh, by the way, Jesse James also rode with that group. So one of his ancestors was a close acquaintance of the notorious Jesse James, right. or at least um, they were in the same military unit. I want to go to the Negro. Um, I think, did Dell, did you have your hand up before Love I Am? So the Negro, Dell, then Love I Am. Go ahead. Um, okay, I, I'm going to be sliding out. Um, Judge Joe Brown and Dana, I want to say thank you for and um, providing a great space as always. Um, I'm going to be checking in every once in a while. But I also want to give you um, a heads up that that um, situation I have going through is going to be picked up by Black Star. They're going to be printing an article about that. So I'll make sure you guys get the first ones when to get off the press too, because it's, it's a lot serious than you think. All right, I just gotta Roger quickly. that. Yeah, thanks. I just gotta quickly say something because I gotta leave right away. All I just have to say is is that people need to be concerned on how he Obama got to where he got, not just what he was doing. Because somebody doesn't just stroll in there by himself without help. There has to be a system in place to get him in to do those things. And they were bypassed by a lot of people doing a lot of wrong things to get him where he needed to be. And this is how this is how things like treason occur. A lot of people, Barack Obama did not just con everybody around him into the White House. That's absolutely absurd. And he had a lot of a lot of help to do so. And so people need to understand that there's a lot of corruption and a lot of corrupt people in a lot of places to do the things that they're doing. This is why we see what's happening to Trump. This is why we see what's happening in the justice system altogether, because there's a lot of people who chose to do a lot of things working together to deprive not just the American people, but other people of their rights. A lot of my plane there, because if people don't realize the amount of corruption that it takes to get someone like him in the White House, then they don't understand what's really going on. And then they will not understand the treason that's happening in front of their faces nor the human trafficking and all the other criminal activities that are just being waved in front of their faces because people are not paying attention to the details. All right. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Dana, for having me here. I've got to run. I'm late. Um, it's good to see you. Have a good day. Thank you for that. Let thank me you. add something real quick. About 15, 16 years ago, I was intrigued by the circumstances and I was going through the net and I stumbled on an interesting picture. There is former President George Herbert Walker Bush standing there next to a golf cart with a golf club. He's facing another gentleman with a golf club. That's Lolo Sotoro. 
And sitting in a second golf cart is, believe it or not, George W. Bush, future President Bush. And he's got his arm around, guess what, Barack Obama, who's about eight or nine years old at the time. So the thing of it is, is you have to understand this is not just a remote kinship. This is an actual kinship operative by close family ties. So you have to understand also that at the time this picture was taken, guess what? This was not long before George Herbert Walker Bush became head of the CIA. So here we have two people in the oil business and two people in the spy business. So what time is that? You get the impression that maybe there was another thing going on here. Not saying it's a conspiracy, but just somebody doing astute long range planning. We got a Negro here that ain't really a Negro. So we can set him up and we can get him in on the sweep of what's happening politically right now. And we can get one of our guys in on the inside who doesn't look like what he is. All right. Um, I'm going to go to Love I Am. Um, Keisha had a hand up, and I just brought up Africa. Go ahead, Love I Am. Keisha, then Africa. This face is so great. Um, And I was going to say that I wouldn't be surprised if he was, like, groomed from an early age. Um, And I wouldn't be surprised if um, even his mom had a Black child just deliberately for to serve function in the agenda um, later on down the line. And so even with you saying that picture of him being around those uh, individuals at a young age, I'm sure they were priming him for uh, the position that he played. Um, A comment that I wanted to make, though, is about the Black American community, Lord Jesus. So I am a millennial. And like I said, uh, I was 18 when it was supposed to be my first time to vote. I was so enthusiastic about it. And then they put him in front of everybody. So I spent a large portion arguing back and forth with family members. Um, Can you please take that sign out of the yard to my parents? Um, They sit up and watch uh, CNN all day. And it's just like... I had become jaded uh, by that experience, and I literally, every election cycle, our our community is like getting duped by things that are just so apparent to me, so apparent to my peers, um, close friends, uh, so immediate friend circles, secondary friend circles, but then it have these parents and these grandparents, these aunts and these uncles who like, I don't know what to do. So I'm seeing that that's happened. That happened with Biden that happened with Obama's second term. Um, And I think that, what do you, what do you think judge about it? What do you think is going on here? Because At 18, I realized we did not have a proper voting designation for our people. We didn't have anyone moving in our interests. And when you have self-love, self-respect, you have standard boundary expectation. And so when people show you that they don't respect those things, then you don't give them anything. So we've engaged in this non-reciprocal relationship with these politicians, got nothing in return. Why won't we advocate for ourselves? Um, why are we always, um, reactive instead of proactive? And there's a younger generation that's going to come up and they're not bandwagon Negroes. Okay. This, that time is over. So they're not impressed by people. They are conspiracy theorists. Um, they're usually, they're highly discerning. I take that back. They, they are highly discerning in my opinion. Um, they call a spade a spade. Um, and, um, they probably care less about pissing their parents and grandparents off, um, by vocalizing their position on things. What can be done so that we can just stop being so gullible? What do you think is the problem there? Well, I'm going to ask you this. Perhaps you're being gullible by thinking the latest group is in fact doing what you think. 
perhaps what they're really doing is what they've been propagandized to do without realizing it. See, I heard it develop. I was grown when it first started happening in my early 20s, back in the late 60s. I listened to what people were saying all over the country on college campuses, and I saw it take place. I was disgusted, but it did. You see, we had a half century where Hollywood, the entertainment industry in terms of the vocal, the songs, the rap, the hip hop, even to an extent country and western, they were propagandizing dysfunction. So we look at dysfunction now as normalcy. And what I hear the latest generation saying sounds to me like, wow, they aren't really asking the right questions. They're asking the questions that they've been propagandized to ask. And it's getting them nowhere when they seek the answers they get because there are no answers. The problem is they need to ask fundamentally, why are we asking this particular set of questions and what does that actually signify? So I am rather depressed by what I see. I see a lot of people out there who really know something. There are a lot of young people, too, who can do something, but they're not getting attended to because what everybody hears is, by careful selection, dysfunction. And that goes back to Jamie Foxx. What happened to put him back in his place and get him to be a apologetic somebody with his tail tucked between his legs like a cur to apologize? Why is it that we think it's normal to apologize for calling a son of a bitch a son of a bitch? You see, I mean, Harry Truman was known as give him hell Harry, and that's been 70 plus years ago. He used to tell you, tell that son of a bitch I'm coming over and I'm kicking his ass. That was the president of the United States. But nowadays, you know, everybody's got to apologize if, They said, excuse me, you farted a little too loud, at least so we know who did it. We can smell it. Okay. Um, All right, Keisha, then Africa. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, I got to run as well. But um, thank you for letting me come in your space, uh, Judge Joe Brown and Dane. Well, uh... you're always welcome. Go right ahead. (laughs) Thank you. It's a pleasure, and I hope all of you guys are really looking at what Judge Joe Brown has been doing, some of the things he's been working on. Um, he's got my support. So, uh, yeah, uh, look into that, I would say. Um, I think Memphis is definitely needs some of the things that he's going to be doing. But, yeah, we'll catch you guys later, and uh, uh, thanks for the space. Hey, thank you for doing what you're doing, standing up for a good faith. My pleasure, my friend. All right. See you later, guys. Thank you. See you later, Keisha. Love having you up. Um, Africa. Hi, thank you for letting me speak, uh, Judge Joe Brown. I've been uh, admiring you for a long time. And basically, I'm really um, just excited um, about this space because I believe that a lot of truth is being told, especially by you. Um I just had a couple of comments. It makes sense if you go back and you look historically the point of a um, back in 2004 when George Bush was elected, he got somewhere in between 10 to 12 percent of the African-American vote. Uh, I believe that also continued in his next election. And so when you had, you have to go back, I think it was 2000, and then you have 2004. But then when Barack Obama came up, in order to basically turn that tide, something would have had to amazingly happen. Like for instance, quote unquote, the first African-American candidate that had the opportunity possibly to be present according to at least our news media. So when I look at that and now I'm looking and kind of connecting what it is that you have said, it makes sense that we have been propagandized uh, for 
a long time. And, and it is also equally disturbing um, that many in our community do not even have a clue about what has happened to us. Um, it took me a minute, right? I was a or, um, but in the same aspect, I do appreciate that you are sharing your knowledge and sharing this truth. And hopefully more of us will be able to connect with what you're saying and learn the truth. Thank you. Well, let me say something. Since we're talking about additions, 2000, a disclaimer, the law office I was with represented Al Gore at the time, or the one that I had formerly been with represented Al Gore at the time, and in fact, we represented him before he became a U.S. Senator. I think the office is still representing him. In any event, that said, somebody that I mentored who wound up, let's say this, becoming involved as a Republican. She was black and female because she got pissed off that a certain black Democratic congressman had tried to sexually proposition her. She became a Republican. Well, she didn't like this character. So she came to me one time and I'd been her mentor since she'd been 19 and she said, one of your Democratic congressmen is going to sell out his party and it's going to happen down in Florida. I said, oh, really? So I said, well, what are you talking about? She said, well, he's going to sell out the party. What he's going to do is they're going to invite him in since he supposedly has experience with people trying to steal elections, and they're going to ask him to check out the voting machines, which were made by Diebold, the same ones we had problems with until last year here in Memphis. And he's not going to see to it that they are clean, so they're going to be problems with the punch cards. And also for heavily democratic areas, the ballots are going to be printed off register so the machines won't be able to read them. I said, really? So she showed me a copy of a commercial lease. And I said, I recognize four of these people. They are prominent Cubano Republicans. So yeah, that's true. Look at the beneficiary. I looked and it was a congressman I was familiar with. And in return for him doing what he was supposed to be doing, which is helping the election be stolen, he was going to get commercial offices in Miami for consultantship. I was also told he was going to resign his office in favor of his son which actually happened on the date predicted. Now, I talked to the federal judge, a black woman who had the case in front of her, and she said that she appointed a team of statisticians. Gore's campaign appointed a team of statisticians, and so did Bush's. Both teams came back and reported to her that it was looking like Gore was getting between 61 and 63% of the vote in Florida. Well, Kathleen Harris, who was the elected commissioner of elections for the state of Florida at the time, had also volunteered in spite of her office to be co-chair for the Bush campaign in Florida. It's clear conflict of interest. The judge relayed to me that she was astonished when this came out, when all three teams of statisticians said it looked like Gore was getting 61 to 63 percent of the vote, that Kathleen Harris literally took her shoes off and ran out of the back of her court in her bare feet and then found out that 15 minutes later she had called the election. U.S. Supreme Court, in one of its worst decisions ever, ruled that so long as 
it did not materially alter the outcome of the election. The fact that an individual citizen was deprived of the effect of his vote, it did not count. However, it is obvious this affected the outcome of the election. And you got Gulf War II, 911, and all kinds of other messes that came out of it and a lot of exploitation. But there was a Democratic congressman who was brought in to look at the election proceedings, look at and examine the machines, look at and examine the ballots that had to be marked by hand with a stylus. And that's what the dangling Chad thing was about, because the devices weren't cleaned. And also the fact that although there were dangling chads, as the federal judge told me you could easily identify what the vote was it's just the machines couldn't because this bad batch of ballots was printed off register so a democrat a crook with a long history of crookedness wound up getting a situation where you got George W. Bush as president of the United States because the election in the state of Florida was stolen from the rightful winner, Al Gore. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent. And I'm running for mayor of Memphis as such. So that's from personal knowledge. This was from examination of the paperwork and from personal acquaintanceship with everybody involved in this mess, except I did not know George W. Bush. But if I ran into Al Gore today, we'd speak because we used to talk. Um, so that um, is the kind of corruption that is rife in this country. Now, 23 years ago, it was the Republicans pulled it off. This time, we've got the Democrats pulling it off, and it's wrong in both instances, and I guess it's tit for tat, but we don't need to allow this, not a spread across the whole country. Right. Um, I don't know. Um, I want to go to um, Torin, um, and before I go to you, Torin, real quick, I just want everybody to know I put in a jumbotron. Judge Joe Brown website, jjb2023.com. He is running for mayor of Memphis. Sign up to the mailing list. You could donate there as well. Um, donate, donate, donate. And if you live in Memphis, vote, vote, vote for Judge Joe Brown for mayor of Memphis. Um, and if you don't live in Memphis, you could help by donating. So the link is in the Jumbotron is jjb2023.com. I don't know how you are on time. Um, I'm about to bring Torin in and he could be the last speaker unless you want to go longer, Judge. So hi, Torin. Did I say it right? Torin, right? Torin. Yeah, Danny, you got it right. You did okay. it right on time. Thank you. Um, yeah, how you doing, Judge? How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I just got one question. Well, one statement and one question I'd love for you to get your um, opinion on. When it comes to the Democratic Party, even though there's been rumblings from black voters, the gatekeepers have been pretty much capable of tuning out a lot of that conversation that's that and that disgruntlement among black um, voters. What can you do and what can black voters who are disgruntled with the Democratic Party and who feel like they're not being heard or they're being pandered to and, pay, and placated and patronized, what can they do to get their message out from around the gatekeepers who basically have the ear of the Democratic Party establishment and won't let anything else in, and they shout down anybody who is a black voter who is disgruntled and frustrated. That's because they're silly plantation Negroes, and they're not bold enough to walk off the plantation, even though the gates are open. Now, every single other ethnic group in this country's history has and still does uh, occasionally vote against the party that counts on them just so they throw them off balance. In other words, you can't count on us. You got to have, you have to keep delivering. But the colored, the Negro, the plantation Negroes don't understand that. So no matter what the Democratic Party does not do for black folk, they're not going to lose black votes. And no matter what the Republican Party tries to do for black folk, they're not going to gain black votes. 
So neither party has an incentive to do a damn thing. So what you're talking about is something that needs to be corrected. And it's got a lot to do with glorification of dysfunction. See, back in the 60s, we didn't see on television pimps, hoes, drug dealers, fat slobs running around naked in public. We saw decency. We saw black folk, other folk trying to work their way up, take care of families, do the right thing. And then starting with Black Caesar, with Fred the Hammer Williams, and then continuing with Superfly, with Rod O'Neill, we got steady glorification dysfunction. So the heroes became pimps, hoes, drug dealers, murderers, thieves, burglars, near the well, gangsters, and thugs. And it leads to where we are now. Take a listen to the music. You're talking about popping caps on each other, moving grams and bitches and hoes. Whereas it used to be got a job, uh, ain't got time to deal with your hoodlum friends outside. Somebody's in love, got lots of money, but nobody to spend it on and talking about observations and life and dedication to causes and people. And what the hell has happened to us? Because we bought into it and it spread around the whole damn world. We talk about hip hop, but the hip hop has been the same for more than 40 years. Some of the lyrics have gotten grosser, but there's never been anything in modern American history where the music stayed the same for 40 years. So, I mean, what the hell has happened? I mean, there's something going on. And the common thread is that everybody in this country, black, white, brown, red, yellow, I don't care what you are, you've got a common enemy. That enemy is those people that want to destroy the human mechanism for bringing about and raising the next generation. We acculturate and socialize for that. We have since we've been in damn caves, and now that we're in condos, some idiots in the last 20 years, last 50, let's be generous about it, been trying to destroy that paradigm. And it doesn't work because humanity doesn't work that way. So we have a dead-end philosophy that will doom the species to extinction or disaster, but for the fact that everybody on this planet Earth is not into this sickness. I don't care whether you're gay. That's not the problem. The problem is when you start trying to groom children to be sex objects for perverts, when you start trying to destroy boys and girls 101 A and B so the children don't know how to deal with the opposite sex. So you destroy every damn thing that humanity is set up when it comes to courtship rituals. You destroy what has developed in humanity culturally and biologically when it comes to sexual differences. So what the devil is going on except stupidity? Now, the People's Republic of China, you want to see where that is? Go in your kitchen drawer, and I defy you to go through one without finding most of it in there saying, made in China. And, by the way, January 2021, they engaged in an official man-up campaign. Russia has got an official man-up campaign. And what the hell are we doing? You see, we depend on everybody. Everybody is of equal value, but they're not equal in what they do because we are mammals. Females have mammary glands that can nurture infants. They can birth infants. The males can cause women to conceive. But the males have an obligation if they want their genes to go on into the next generation to protect the women and children, to die if necessary. And we start throwing away that paradigm and we start throwing in that garbage where instead of the men getting up out of the lifeboats so the women and children get in them first the next time a Titanic sinks, 
we got some sick bastard wants to put on a dress and sneak in and take a seat. See, that's wrong. This country has some differences. Yes, people die for one thing or another, but it's part of the collateral consequence of having a system like we have where it is not dictatorial, where it is not based on a peasant class run by their betters who are sword-wielding, brutal aristocrats. It's like we don't want to go back to horse and buggy, and even riding on a horse, you can get your neck broken real easy. Look at the Superman. So we have collateral damages for operating motor vehicles. People get killed all the time. It's a bloodbath on the highways. People are on planes that crash all the time, but we're not about to give it up just because we can be safe. Those are are collateral circumstances and consequences we deem acceptable. Well, guess what? Having a system where we don't have some charlatan defining what we have to think, we have collateral consequences that flow from that, and we have to put up with it. And that's why we had this long thing Land of the free and home of the brave, even if it wasn't totally free, but we certainly could behave bravely. And we have been trying to remedy the defects with what we put out. The system per se isn't bad. It's just we need to refine the damn kinks. But we have people that want to give up the damn system so they can get not only what they want to do freak on in the bedroom, but destroy everybody else because they don't have any stake in tomorrow. And I'm not talking about all gay people. Some of them are fine individuals. I'm talking about the sick bastards that want to destroy human nature just because they don't fit in. They hate men or they hate the fact they're not men or they hate that they're not strong men. That's the beta boys, the soy boys. They hate that they're not normal men. That's some of the gays, but not all of them. And they hate the fact that they got a taste for children, which is sick. So we've got a whole bunch of sickness and self-hating that we've allowed to dictate what we aspire to, and we've got to stop it. That's why we have so much damn violence in the neighborhoods and in the hallways. It's not guns. It's the fact that there's no character. It's not guns. It's the fact that we got rid of shaming and guilt. It's not guns. It's the fact that we don't let the boys learn how to deal with bullies like they have since humans have been on this planet. It's not guns. It's the fact that we select people to lead ourselves who can't lead, damn it, unless they're sitting in an office because nobody would follow them. If the population had a huge case of mass diarrhea and no toilet paper, most of these clowns couldn't get anybody to follow them to a bank of porta potties with an ample supply of butt paper. It is pathetic. Excuse me, it's Sunday. I guess somebody needs to deliver a sermon and damn it. Where the hell are these preachers supposed to be talking about sin instead of just beliefs? And stop being pulpit pimp, some of you. Um, no, I, listen, you are preaching, but you know, I, I, think I you, passed the mic. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't know how much time you have because it's been a little over two hours. I don't know if you want to keep going or you want to end I here. I keep going hell with it. Okay, so if anybody want to request to come up, please do so. Um, Mimi, I'm not bringing you back up. Um, I'm just not right now. And I need people who want to have a serious discussion, and it's not that type of. We're not we're not on that type of time today. Um, so if anyone want to request to come up, please do so. And listen, what you just said, um, it's all facts, and I appreciate you taking the time out today, Judge Joe Brown, on your Sunday. Uh, who is this? Oh, I didn't mean to bring you up, Mimi. I'm about to drop you, Mr. T. Um, and, um, Mr. T is somebody else. Yeah. Oh, right, go ahead, Mr. T. All right. Awesome. No, thanks, Dana. Uh, hey, Josh, good to see you. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I agree with uh, pretty much what you've said um, in terms of just going back to family values and the like. The one thing I, I would say, and I I don't know if this is something you've spoken about before, but what the Tea Party did to the Republicans after, I think, Obama's first term, I think it's something Black Americans should consider as well in terms of just starting to vote in um, Black representatives into Congress, those that, you know, align with the ideals that, you know, a lot of people in the space here have. I think building small that way um, will go a long way, particularly in the Senate. So I think starting with just you running for mayor is something people should start to to look into, you know, whether people are running independent um, is definitely something I think should be considered. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you again. Okay. Um, Thank King. you. King. Um, King, I'm sorry, King King Neezy, you can unmute King Neezy. Yes, uh, I got it. When somebody. Yeah. Uh, um. Okay. So, if you request to come up. Um, I'm always skeptical with people with certain profile pictures, but please don't come up in here trolling. I'm, you know, you're not going to get a reaction out of me. Not today. Just not today. We're not doing it. Um, yeah. Who is this? Um, sir Kinder. Um, you could speak, sir, but, you know, anything you want to say, sir Kinder. Oh, I did not expect that. Hello, everybody. Sir Joe Brown. I'm about, uh, just a few years younger than you, but I follow your career since Hollywood, so probably 25 years ago. And I just want to say I admire the wisdom, everything shared in this show. And after all, it's Sunday, so don't be don't be scared. I'm all about positivity. And uh, yeah, thank you all for doing this. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Um, all right, Giselle, hello. Oh, oh my God, Miss Dana oh, and Judge Joe Brown, why must we waste this time on Beyonce's internet with this foolishness? What is this title about? Okay, so let me just say something. Um, this is not the trolling hour. This is not the play play hour or the gossip hour. Um, we are actually talking about serious discussion. So if you're triggered by the top, uh, by the title, that's fine. Just ask what we're talking about if you're confused. Okay, you drop down. I, listen, people, you're not getting a reaction out of me today. Is no. this the same one that's been trolling us every week? And not, all this is somebody, people? that's somebody else. So don't, don't, don't try that, to come up it here has for the same somebody. Kind of, the same kind of fake voice, so come on. Right. So you drop down. I didn't drop you. I don't know. Did, I don't know if Nikki dropped you down, but um, I don't know. If, should I if you wanted to speak to her judge? I don't know. I don't want to speak to that. I mean, okay. <laughs> let's put it this way. When you've got a fake voice, go someplace else, please. Come up with your voice. Post your picture if you can. Uh, let's know who we're talking to. Yeah. And, 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 let, let's put it this way. I had a very good friend, now deceased, who was a tenured professor in linguistics at UCLA. And as he was fond of saying, you can be Chinese, but if you're raised in Alabama, you're likely to speak like anybody else raised in Alabama. If you're raised in New Jersey, you've got that New Jersey voice that you have, Dana, and everybody else does. But whether they're in China Africa, Europe, South America, North America, certain folk have the exact same intonation and contrived voice patterns that go along with a certain outlook on life that they want to advertise. So you can tell when somebody's trying to give you a construct rather than reality. 
Now, everybody's got a front. Some people's front emphasizes what they're about, and some people's front tries to disguise what they're about. So I'm always suspect when anybody comes up sounding like this person just did, this guy, who sounds like several others who sound identical to him, who have come on trying to troll. Now, if you want to get your freak on in your bedroom, that's your damn business. But when you start trying to interject yourself into social opinion, economic opinion, political reality, then you're open to attack like anybody else. Now. Exactly. Um, Arenza. Don't judge him, Joe Brown.